Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, machine QA with the MyQA dosimetry plugin. And uh, yeah, let me first thank the organizers, Ralf Schira and Tina Baker, for inviting me. We have to perform regular QA tasks um, according to the German Dean protocol, which is in parts uh, the same as the TG 142 protocol but it, there are differences. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about differences, or, um, but I want to talk about what we measure. This is uh, a weekly QA. We measure absolute dose, depth dose, and beam profiles. And for this, we use the MyQA tasks, output constancy, energy constancy, and profile constancy. Um, there's also a a MyQA test called Wedge Profiles, but we still didn't use this. Where we're going to implement this in the next time. So um, first, I want to talk about the setup of the hardware, which is um, pretty simple. We have all our equipment stored in a trolley. You can see here the matrix detector, and down here is the uh, gantry mount we use. So I'll show it to you later how it looks at the machine. First of all, we have to install the accessory holder, and then the gantry mount is put to this, as you can see here. After that, the matrix detector is put in and can be aligned to the light field with micrometer screws so it's very um, very precise and easy to install um, yeah finally you have to connect only two cables which is the network cable and the power cable for measuring the uh, absolute dose, depth dose, and profiles. There are two uh, additional plates. This is the energy verification plate and the photon verification plate, which have to be put onto the detector. So each of these plates has different uh, metal absorbers, eight for the electron verification plate and two or four times two for the photon verification plate. Also you can see indicated on the plates uh, the, the lines or the uh, detectors where the uh, profiles are measured. So uh, cross line profile, inline profile and diagonal profiles. Okay, the first thing you start with is the output calibration of the detector. It's done in uh, MyQA under the equipment setup. There you have your detector and you can add here output calibration, which is uh, pretty simple. You can uh, define how many monitor units you irradiate the detector with and how, how much this is supposed to be in absolute dose. And uh, everything like temperature and pressure correction is recorded as you do the calibration. Once done that, you can turn on to baseline measurements. Uh, for the case of the energy constancy, you can choose, well, first, of course, you have to define your, your test here and then do the baseline measurement. For the energy constancy, you can choose here the proper energies. In this case, uh, we have five electron energies and two photon energies. Once done that, you can go to the uh, normal measurements. As I said, it's, it's every 14 days in our department. 
And um, yeah, the only thing you have to do is connect the detector to the network, do a uh, zero a zero measurement, and then your actual measurement. You can give here notes and descriptions of what has to be done, how the setup is, and how many monitor units you have to apply and everything. And right after the measurement, it's been evaluated and you can see whether it's passed or failed. The same for photons. Um, next point is output constancy. Again, first you have to do perform the baseline measure measurements. Um, as I said before, you have to do the uh, calibration and in our case we applied the standard 100 monitor units to the detector and said this is one gray. Uh, because of that, you don't have to actually measure this uh, baseline but just um, put it to one gray. You can enter the number, whatever number you like, according to your detector uh, setup. Yeah. So again for two energies here and the measurement looks the measurement mask looks the same like for the other uh, one difference here maybe you can see this little word here it says share measurements this is a great tool because you can uh, you don't have to perform uh, measurements for every different task but you can do it in one shot. You can measure the output, the uh, depth dose and the profile in just one single shot and that's a great advantage because it saves a lot of time. So this is for the photons. After that uh, you can you can analyze these these measurements in the in the trend analysis which is shown here so you have over time the here you have the time and you have your outputs and what you can see here is are the um, the limits you can set the warning limit and the fail limit and you can also see that we changed it, these limits at some point a bit stronger. Um, this is all kept in the database so you can, you can uh, still see when you changed something after a long time. Um, next, next point is uh, the profile constancy task. Once again the baseline measurements have to be performed first. There you can already display your profile. There's a little button you can press and directly see how it, your profile looks like. This is for electron, electrons. These are the photon profiles. Inline, cross line here and the diagonal profiles. The measurement works the same. You have these passed and failed status at every um, parameter. Also you can again display your profile right after the me measurement. Here is the example for the photon profiles. And it gives you an overlay of the the baseline profile with the actual measurement profile. Um, there's another way to analyze profiles that is the test repository. It's a different section in MyQA. There you have all your measurements and you can filter them by task name, by date, by machine, whatever you defined before. So you can pick up the, the right measurement to show 
to anybody who is coming to the clinic and asks bad questions. So um, you can display all your profiles like this. Also there is a profile comparison function where you can compare two profiles and see the difference here. It's So, uh, yeah, that's another example here. And yeah, the last point I want to talk about is a little bit about the daily QA. We use every morning the PDW quick check device for different parameters. Here, for example, is the symmetry parameter. And as you can see, there's a large scatter in this. We don't know why this is. We tried to measure it with different people. We tried to displace the detector, but nothing helped. There is there is no, we don't have an, any idea why there is such a large scatter. So we started to measure this with the matrix detector. And as you can see, there's no such large scatter here. Same is true for the other machine we have. So um, it looks like that the matrix detector is much more stable in giving you these parameters. And yeah, with that said, I come to my last slide, the advantages of my QA. This is, first of all, the fast, the very fast and stable detector setup. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's the whole setup process takes only five minutes. So it can be, can be done very quickly. Also, um, with having the gantry mount, we have only one setup for machine and patient QA, which, give us, which gives us the possibility to, yeah, to measure a, a rotation, uh, to measure a VMAT plan, for example, and uh, right after that we do the machine QA, or the other way around. So there's no extra work to be done. As I said before, it's, it's, it's very fast, especially by using the share measurement function which gives you uh, all the three uh, parameter sets that I talked about in, in one single shot. And then there's the detailed analysis possibility. You have the trend analysis over a long period of time. You have the profile uh, analysis. And you have the test repository where every measurement you've done so far is, is being recorded and you can always find it there. You have, for example, the diagonal profiles for free. Every, every profile you record, there's not only the, uh, the parameters that you set up in your test, but it records also the diagonal profiles just for free. And then, yeah, you can record any user-defined parameter over a long time. For example, the symmetry, the isocenter position, the table position, water pressure, whatever you want to record whatever you want to keep track on. So this, this trend analysis always gives you a good way to see how, uh, how a parameter behaves over time. Yeah, that was my talk. <laughs>